Hey there, welcome back. Uh, it's unit 5-4 here, and we're going to work uh, work some more on some characteristics of quadratic equations. Here's your math career for the day. An epidemiologist, kind of a fancy word there, but these, uh, these career professionals here work in medicine, of course, and they investigate and describe the causes and spread of disease that develops and develop means for prevention or control. Um, again, super important job. Uh, we need these kind of people a lot. And you can see the low end, median, and high end salary over here on the left. And you can see your mathematics here. These people work closely, of course, with doctors and, and uh, pharmaceutical companies and even the government with uh, maybe the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, I believe they call that. Nonetheless, great job if you're uh, medically inclined and have some good math there. All right, we're still in standard 21.0, and today we're going to learn to determine if uh, a vertex if we are only given a quadratic equation. Now, we're actually, remember the vertex is the high point or low point of any parabolic function, but we need an exact point sometimes, an exact point. We're going to be able to do that without a picture. So here's our quick warm-up here from previous. What is the format for a quadratic equation? The format for a quadratic equation. Remember that? How about this one? Uh, what is a vertex? Well, we did talk about a vertex just a second ago. Uh, what is an axis of symmetry? An axis of symmetry. And how about this? What is the equation for finding the axis of symmetry? So, of course, the format for a quadratic equation, uh, we've discussed this uh, several times. It's going to be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Uh, the vertex is actually a maximum or minimum point of a, of a parabolic function. So it's a max or min. Okay. Uh, what's an axis of symmetry? This is that line that cuts the parabolic shape directly in half. And what is the equation? We can use negative b over 2a. And of course these things are in your notes from our previous time together. All right. So given a quadratic equation, how do we find the vertex. How do we find the vertex? Let's take a look here. First step, find the axis of symmetry using negative b over 2a. So we find the axis of symmetry negative b over 2a. Step two, plug the x value from step one into the quadratic equation and solve for y. We're going to practice this in just a second. Finally, step one and step two make up your ordered pair. One value for x, the next value for y. So put the following problem into your notebook, please, right now as we work together, right here. All right, let's find the vertex for the following quadratic equation. First of all, let's find the axis of symmetry, x squared plus 4x plus 5. So how do we do that? Remember how we found that yesterday? We used negative b over 2a, so we identified a, b, and c. So what's a, b, and c here? Well, a is 1, b is 4, and c is negative 5. So a is 1, b is 4, C, negative 5. You'll notice those 1, 4, negative 5. Now let's go ahead and plug in the opposite of B. It's going to be the opposite of 4 is negative 4, divided by 2 over 1. So what is that axis of symmetry? It turns out to be negative 2. Now what did step 2 tell us to do? It said take that value for X, that axis of symmetry. We know that it's going to be at negative 2 now. That's where the, the middle of the parabola is. So we've got some of the parabola is going to be on this side and some is going to be on this side, right down the middle. Now plug the x value from step 1 into the quadratic equation and solve for y. Let's go back to the original function we were given. y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. Plug that negative 2 in and just go to work. So order of operations, negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 5. What is negative 2 squared? Well, that happens to be 4. 4 times negative 2, negative 8, minus 5. And we look at, putting all that together, we get negative 9. So now we've got two things. We've got a negative 2 and a negative 9. Simply write them as an ordered pair, and you're all done. The x-coordinate, negative 2. The y-coordinate, negative 9. So where is that vertex? It's negative 2, negative 9. And you'll notice now, is this the lowest point of the graph or the highest point of the graph? Well, we go back to your original function. What was their value for a? Okay, I believe the value for a was indeed 1, so this is going to be a minimum point. Minimum point. So there's your vertex down here at the bottom. 
negative 2, negative 9. All right, then. <clears throat> Within your notebook, uh, find the vertex of the following quadratic equation. So on your own here, negative x squared plus 6x plus 1. So let's follow those steps that we did, and I'll kind of get you started in the right direction. Something I would encourage you to do consistently when you're given this is literally or at least mentally identify A, B, and C. So A is negative 1, B is 6, and C is positive 1. That was our next step. Our next step then was to use negative B or the opposite of B over 2A. So go ahead and do that and see what you come up with. All right, if I did this, I'm looking at the opposite of B. That's going to be negative 6 over 2 times negative 1. Is that negative 2? So did you get an axis of symmetry of 3, negative 6 divided by negative 2? So hopefully we got a 3 there. Let's see what happens. Uh, and actually, we jumped right to the answer, didn't we? Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Let's see what happens. So 3 is right. We know that. Now let's go back to work. If we take... Um, this being 3, that's our axis of symmetry. Now we're going to plug that 3 into here and into here. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. The opposite of 3 squared plus 6 times 3 plus 1. Well, the opposite of 3 squared, 3 squared is 9. The opposite of that is negative 9. Uh, let's see. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1. Negative 9 plus 18, that's positive 9, plus 1. 9 plus 1, so I think they're correct. We should end up with a vertex of 3, 10. Would that be a maximum point or a minimum point? Hopefully you said maximum point because A here is negative, so it's going to give us a frowny face there, like that downward shape. Okay, maximum point. Alright then, so just to make sure it's in there, let's uh, review real quickly. Give it a quadratic uh, equation, what are the three steps needed to determine a vertex? Uh, the step one, use negative b over 2a. Step two, take that value you found, plug it back into the original equation, solve for y. Step three, put the two together. All right, that's it for unit 5-4. Uh, be prepared to practice. We're going to do quite a few of these as we go forward. Lots and lots of repetition, getting used to this. And once you do, you know, a handful of them, they become very, very simple. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. Find someone you trust. Um, I'm available all the time, so just reach out. Okay? All right, then. We'll talk to you soon.